Okay, so today we're going to be making this scene in Blender, which is inspired by a post I saw on the subreddit, Oddly Satisfying. So if you see that post, this is based on it. Uh, so first of all, you want to open up a new scene in Blender. So if you want to make sure all your settings are exactly the same as mine, you want to get the latest version of Blender 2.8 from the link in the description, and then open it, go to File, load factory settings and click OK. So then you'll have all the same settings that I've got and all the same hotkeys and everything. So to start off, I'm going to just take the default cube, tab into edit mode and then select with left click this one and then shift and select this one for these vertices, X to delete vertices. So now we've got this sort of shape here and I'm going to go tab to back out of edit mode, S to scale, Y along the Y axis and then 5. So now we've got this sort of backdrop already. So I want to position the camera where I want it, so I'm going to press N to open this side here. Under view, lock camera to view. 0 to go to the camera view and then pan around, put the camera about there. And now I actually want to drag both the camera and this uh, backdrop up. So I'm going to select the camera with left click, shift select the backdrop, G, Z, and then 1, so that this world origin there is at the bottom, and it's it's sort of in line with the bottom of this plane there. So now we can start lighting the scene. So I'm going to go Z into rendered view. You see it's, it's sort of boring lighting at the moment. So what I'm actually going to use is an HDR light, which is an environment map. So it's sort of a map of a real environment, and the lights from that can light your scene. So instead of you having to set up lights, you can just use this. So you're going to take your light you've got at the moment, X to delete, and then get rid of it. And now under the World tab on the right here, select World. And now under Color, select this little sort of black square at the side. And now Environment Texture. So it's pink, it you know looks horrible. It's because it's not got a texture loaded in yet, so this is just the default. So if you go over to open here, and now it's my HDRI's folder, but I'll put a link in the description to the HDRI I'm using, and I get all mine from HDRI Haven, it's a great website, you can get them all for free. So select that there, open image, and there you go. Your whole scene is lit basically with this sort of studio lighting, which is from the HDRI. And I want to make it a bit brighter, so I'm going to go to the shading tab at the top here, and now at the moment it's on object. I'm going to go to World, and then set the Strength to 2. So now when I go back to Layout, which is the sort of default, if I go back into Rendered View, it should be a bit brighter. So now I want to make the actual ball itself, so I'm going to just hide this cube for the moment. In fact, I'll, I'll rename it while I'm at it to Backdrop, just by double-clicking on it to Name, and then pressing Enter once I've finished typing. And now back into solid view and I'm going to press shift s just to snap this 3d cursor back to the origin so shift s and then cursor to world origin so that'll put it back there and wherever the cursor is is where a new object will go in when you make it so I want my new object to be in the origin so I've just put it back there so shift a now mesh and then UV sphere so this is going to make the the basis of our sort of hemisphere so I'm going to press 1 to go into the side view R to rotate, and then 90. So now I can press tab to go into edit mode, alt A to deselect everything, and then Z and wireframe so we can see all the way through this sphere here. Now I'm going to go B to into the marquee select tool, and then left click and drag to select this whole right hand side, X, and then delete vertices. So if we go Z back into solid, we can see we've deleted that whole half, but we need to fill this edge with something. So to select just this loop around the edge, you don't have to shift select them all individually. You can actually hold alt and then left click sort of roughly on the edge loop and it'll select the whole loop for you because they're all connected. So now you can press E to extrude, right click to snap back to the original place and then S to scale those extruded vertices down a bit and now F to make a new face. And now alt A to deselect and tab back out of edit mode. So I want to smooth over this edge a little bit, so to do that I'm going to use a modifier, so modifier tab over here, add modifier, subdivision surface, and then pump that up to 3 I think. 
and now make you see there's still sort of ridges here so to get rid of those you can go to object and then shade smooth and I'll make it nice and smooth over there so I'm going to bring back the backdrop just to make this the right size so you see it's way too big at the moment so one to go to side view set into wireframe and I'm going to scale it right down to about there go into camera view actually maybe a bit bigger I'll put it about there and I'm going to rotate it by pressing R just on the Z axis and 90 degrees so just type 90 on your keyboard and that's going to rotate it so that it's facing the way we want it to and now one to go into the sort of side view and now wireframe and now G to move Z to lock it to the X the Z axis sorry and then lift it up just that amount there now we can go back into solid view and if we go into rendered you see we've got this um, you know nice shiny sphere or hemisphere really where we want it so I can start making the mirror now so I'll come back into solid view with Z the mirror is just going to be a actually I'll hide this sphere and backdrop now the mirror is going to be just a circle so shift A and then circle tab into edit mode E to extrude right click and then S to scale down and then F to make a face in the middle there A to select everything E to extrude up and I'm just going to extrude it about that amount and now I'm going to do Control R to make an edge loop well I'm going to deselect everything with all A first and then Control R to make an edge loop just in the middle of here so you see it's doing these yellow lines wherever I hover but if I left click it'll make a set of vertices all the way around and you can move it at the moment but I want to just right click to put it back to where it's supposed to be in the middle and now I'm going to scale these up just with S just a little bit like that and then tab back out and now I'm going to add a bevel modifier so what's this going to do is make these edges around the top sort of hard because I don't want this front face to be at all curved I want that to be all flat so I'm going to add modifier bevel and then set it to weight so that it's only beveling the ones which I want it to so if I go into tab alt A to deselect and then alt click and alt click shift alt click to select multiple edge loops now I can set the mean bevel weight up here in transform to be one for these and the bevel's much too big at the moment so I can hold shift down and drag in this width part which will sort of it's like fine adjustment if you're holding shift set the segments to two and now it's quite hard to see but there is a bevel on that side but what it means is that when we add our subdivision surface which you can either do by adding modifier or because I want a subdivision surface level three I can just do control and then three and it will add it for me automatically what it means with that bevel is that all this edge is curved but this edge here has the bevel which means that the front edge is completely flat this whole face is flat so I can bring back the sphere in the backdrop and now scale the mirror about how I want so first of all I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees 7 to go into top view Z into wireframe and then G along the y-axis just about there so you can see it's it's just passing right in front of that hemisphere so now we can go back into solid view zero to camera view and I'm going to scale it right down with S and then GZ so it's about the right place and then to get it just right I'm going to go one to side view Z wireframe and then G and Z again just to move it on the Z axis just above the floor So now I'm going to make the string for the mirror. So the way I'm going to do this is tab into edit mode, Alt A to deselect everything, and left click just this very top vertex there. So now I'm going to go to Shift S, cursor to selected. So this 3D cursor, which you remember from before, is where new objects will be spawned in at, is now where the string is going to sort of come from. So we're going to go Shift A, circle, and you see the circle its origin is where the 3D cursor is so we can press S to scale this right down all the way down to about there G, Z so it's underneath it's sort of inside here and then E, Z and put it about there so now if we go back out of edit mode you can see we've got this string coming out of the top press Alt A to deselect everything and now if you hover around the top here and press L 
it'll select only the string and the reason for that is that even though it's part of the same object as the rest of the mirror the vertices aren't actually linked to any that are in the mirror which means that when you press L to select all linked vertices it only does the string ones and the reason we want just the string ones is because we're going to make a material which is going to have the mirror so that's applied to everything at the moment and then we're going to make a new material which is string and we're going to assign the string material to these ones so they're, they're all the same at the moment but when we change them later you'll see it'll make the string a white material and the mirror the sort of reflective material so actually we're going to start making materials now anyway so we'll go over to the shading tab at the top here zero into camera view z into rendered view and now just before we do anything else because we're using the EV renderer, which is up here in render engine EV, we've got to turn on screen space reflections. So if any of you are used to cycles, you don't have to do this, but you really have to use it if you're doing any kind of reflections or really anything realistic in EV. And then we're going to uncheck half res trace so that it's more accurate. So now we're going to make the material for the ball. So we'll select the ball with left click, material tab down here, and new and then I'm going to do red ball and now here you see we don't get any of the material nodes the reason for that is we're still in world so up in the top left here select world and then go to object and now you'll see all the nodes for the object whichever object you've got selected so for the ball I want to select that make sure you're on red ball here and then I'll just give that a nice red color there that's about right mirror the string is going to stay as it is, but if we select mirror, this mirror one is going to be metallic and it's much too rough at the moment, which means you're barely seeing a reflection, so we're going to turn this roughness all the way down to about there. So now you're seeing this full reflection of the ball in the mirror. And you'll see because we applied the string a separate material, if we go Alt HD select, you can see that the string has this white material, whereas the mirror is obviously mirrored. So now what we want to do is start animating so the way to do that is going to be to go back into solid view first of all select the mirror and then go into animation tab and now if we press 1 to see on the side view said to go into wireframe the mirror is not going to rotate where we want it to we want it to rotate around the top of this string here so to do that we've got to set its origin to be at the top of the string so to do that we're going to tab into edit mode alt hd select everything and then C to select, well make sure you're in wireframe first of all, so I am already C to go into circle select and just click around this top face and right click to come out, so that will make sure you've got that whole top set of vertices selected and now if we go to shift S cursor to selected, that 3D cursor will go there and now we can tab out of edit mode and then go to object set origin, origin to 3D cursor and that tiny little orange dot there shows that when we rotate it, it's always going to rotate around that origin. So now we can animate. So make sure you're in 1 for side view. At frame 1, I want it to be rotated about there. So if you see in the, um, the top left, you can see it says rot, which is for rotation. Uh, and I want it to be about 17 degrees. So I'm going to type 17 and then press I and rotation. Now frame 60, which I'm going to select by right clicking on the timeline here, I want it to be at the other side, so that's going to be 17 back to the middle, and then another 17, so it's going to be 34 degrees, so minus 34, left click, I, rotation, and then back to 120, so that's going to be all the way to one side, and then it needs to come all the way back again, so we're going to go rotate, and then 34 this time and then insert rotation keyframe and now we're going to select the end part so this is the end frame and make that our frame 120 so that at this point it's going to loop back to the start so if we come back into solid view and press space to play the animation you'll see that it swings over to one side swings back and then the whole animation loops so very nice press space just to pause it again so everything looks pretty much ready to go now you'd think but you can see there aren't really any proper shadows on the ground here 
And the reason for that is that we haven't baked any shadows. So this is, again, it's another thing which you only have to do in Eevee. You don't have to do in Cycles, but it is very important if you want the lighting to look realistic. So you've got to go to Shift S and then Cursor to World Origin so that it's back in the middle. And now Shift A, Light Probe, Irradiance Volume. So sounds very fancy, but it's really just something which will calculate the shadows for you. It's not something that will show up in the render, but the shadows that it calculates will. So I'm going to GZ to bring it up a little bit. Put it GX so it's just behind this wall a little there. And then 0, Z. Actually, I'm going to scale it up a little bit more about there. Z render just so you can see what it's doing. Now go into render tab over here, indirect lighting, and then bait. And now we've got much more accurate shadows than we did before. So we can go to Alt-H, deselect everything, and if you press play you can see your whole rendered animation in real time. So now what we want to do is export the animation. So to do this you want to come to your output tab over here. In output, you see it's TMP at the moment, which is the temporary blender output. So you never want to render to there because it's, it's hard to find, it's sort of in system files somewhere. So if you click this tab over the side where it says open a file browser, click that, go to your desktop or wherever you want to make it, and then new directory for new folder. I'm just going to call it new folder. Click it and then accept. And now whatever you render is going to go into that folder. And there's different ways of rendering animation. So the most versatile way where you can edit the pictures afterwards, you edit, you export every single frame as an image, so a PNG or a JPEG, that kind of thing. But for the sake of this video, to make it a bit simpler so I don't have to bring all the images back into one video at the end, I'm just going to render it straight as a video, so an AVI JPEG, so that when I render it all, it's going to render all of these 120 frames, and it's going to put them into a video format for me, just in Blender. So if I go to the Render tab here, make sure you're in EV, and now Render, Render Animation, and it's going to bring all these frames together, render it up, and then at the very end you'll have a video file. So I'll show you that once it's finished rendering. Okay, so the render is completed now. So, And if you go to wherever you've saved your file, so mine's on my desktop, go into the folder, and here you go, you've got that, that file there. And if you view it, you see full video, and if you set it to loop, so you know I can do this here, set it to loop and it will loop perfectly so if any of you have decided to make this yourself please say in the comments and if you've got any queries or anything I've done doesn't really match what happens when you try and make it please just ask in the comments I'll try and reply to everyone thanks for watching